your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Weekend Edition, live at 10. And I said, guys, we need to get off of here. If there's a spark, it's going to blow. And blow it did. The explosion was felt throughout Allentown and parts of Lehigh County. Homes were destroyed. Dozens of people evacuated. The explosion flattened three homes, but somehow all of those residents are alive tonight. The blast happened about 1.30 this afternoon on Mohawk Street in Allentown. The city fire marshal and UGI crews are on the scene investigating. WFMZ's Karen Millett is live in Allentown with the very latest. Karen. John, UGI tells us a contractor was out working on a gas meter in this neighborhood at the same time as the explosion, but no word tonight on whether a gas leak was to blame. When you take a look at the scene, it is amazing that no one was seriously injured or killed. Three homes were completely leveled, at least two others damaged, and tonight, as you can see from behind me, the floodlights have turned this area into daylight so that crews can continue working around the clock so that people can get back in their homes. We have 791 Mohawk, 789 Mohawk, and 787 Mohawk that were leveled by the explosion. Homeowners from as far away as four miles say they could hear the explosion and closer they could feel the ground shake. Almost like uh, if, if somebody set off a firecracker like right in the next room or maybe a cannon going off. And others with the Queen City Airport nearby thought it was a plane crash. The bank shook the neighborhood, bringing three homes literally to the ground. Pieces of the building scattered in yards. And then I looked out my back window off on my porch and I saw a big fireball coming up this, you know, up and lots of black smoke. Dozens of calls to 911. Firefighters were already on their way. It took about 45 minutes to get the fire under control. Hot spots and flare-ups are a concern. And we're still actually working on it. We're overhauling as we speak. We need to get some big machinery in here um, because of some of the debris. And uh, we still have some hot spots. So we are on it. Because of the potential for flare ups and those hot spots, there was a flare up just this afternoon while we were here. And since all the services to that block have been turned off, people and their pets who live on Mohawk Street on the side of the street on the east side have been evacuated and will stay most of the night at least in the shelter at South Middle at South Mountain Middle School. For now we're live in Allentown, Karen Millette, 69 News. All right, thanks very much, Karen. And after the explosion, between 60 and 80 homes were evacuated. It included houses on Mohawk and South Delaware streets. After several hours, everyone from South Delaware was allowed back in their homes. But some residents of homes that were not damaged on Mohawk streets are still waiting to find out if they'll be able to get back in their homes tonight. Meanwhile, residents of the three homes that were destroyed and three that were damaged are getting help tonight. The Red Cross is providing a safe place to stay, hot meals, and checking on the victims' emotional needs to help them kind of regroup, if you will, and then we'll follow those families through the recovery process with information and referral. But right now is to get them to a safe, warm place at the middle school, speak with them, and meet their immediate emergency needs. Now, this all reportedly started while a UGI gas worker was working on a meter inside one of the homes. And 69 News spoke with a woman who says it was her gas meter that was being serviced. WFMZ's Brittany Westbrook has her dramatic story. So then he's fiddling around down there, and all of a sudden I heard like this pop and then this whoosh. Crystal Max says next she heard gas rushing out of a pipe. She says the smell was overwhelming, and something told her to grab her four grandchildren and get out of the house. Max says the gas man came with them and called for help. And he's telling him, I can't plug it. He said, the pressure's too strong, I can't plug it. I had already called my husband telling him, you need to get back here now, now, hurry up and get here. So I called back and was saying, are you on your way? And they were saying, we're turning the corner. And no sooner did I hang up, Everything just blew, and it knocked me down across the street, my, uh, my nephew down on his knees across the street, and my little grandson got cut across his face. That guy got cut, and I turned around, and everything was just coming down. Before the explosion, Mac went door to door trying to get her neighbors to come out, but not everybody made it in time. The gas guy just fell down on his knees looking up and then put his hands out on the ground like, oh, my God. Mac says the explosions kept happening until her pets, her house, and everything else was gone. It just kept blowing up and blowing up. Tonight, things are much more quiet, and Mac and her family don't know their next move, but they are amazed and grateful they have one another. God was smiling. He told us, you know, get those kids out that house, knock on those doors, get those people out. It was going to go. In Allentown, Brittany Westbrook, 69 News.
And again, no one seriously injured. Now, this explosion in Allen Town comes just a day after a house exploded in Bethlehem. Today, investigators were back on the scene trying to figure out what happened. The Bethlehem Fire Department launched a full investigation this morning into what caused the explosion at 519 10th Avenue. No injuries have been reported. Workers spent most of yesterday searching for a gas leak that could have caused the explosion. So far, no official cause has been released. There's no word on what caused a fire today in Monroe County. It started around 6.30 this morning at a house on Effort Miola Road in Chestnut Hill Township. Officials say no one was hurt, and the Red Cross is helping the people who lived in that home. Firefighters in Berks County saved some homes today. Officials say a brush fire started around 12.30 on Neversink Mountain. Crews got it under control in around two hours before it approached any homes. There's no word on what started that fire. Reading police are asking for the public's help in fighting the people who set three fires this week. Two of the fires were on Cedar Street. One was on Moss Street. All three started within a few hours of the others on Thursday night. Police say witnesses saw three teenagers running from the scene, and police say they think the fires may be related. Workers were cleaning up a big mess at a Berks County school today. Officials say parts of Reading High School were flooded after a water pipe burst. Several classrooms and computer labs took on water. There's no word on how long it'll take to clean up the mess or if classes will be affected next week. Some residents in Easton are a little more educated tonight on what's being done to fight crime in the city. A crime symposium was held today at St. John's Evangelical Church. A number of local officials spoke about at the event about various crime-fighting tools. Organizers say they want to show residents how they can help fight crime and what anti-crime organizations are doing in the city. We wanted to give uh, citizens some, some answers to questions on how to you know, report and join up with organizations that um, help keep crime down and help uh, attack crime. Discussions were also held about the judicial system, school security, and the gang problem. Health officials in New Jersey say they've confirmed another case of E. coli. Since being linked last week to a Taco Bell in South Plainfield, New Jersey, the outbreak has left at least 63 people ill in at least six states, including Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, officials in Hudson County, New Jersey, closed all five Taco Bells in that area. Green onions are believed to be the cause of the outbreak. A spokesperson for Taco Bell says the company no longer plans to sell them. Outgoing Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is in Iraq tonight. The spokesperson says he's there to express his appreciation to the troops. Yesterday, Rumsfeld had an emotional farewell at the Pentagon, where he defended his record on Iraq and Afghanistan. President Bush announced the day after the elections he was replacing the defense secretary. Rumsfeld's last full day will be December 17th. Robert Gates will take over the next day. For the first time in four years, the space shuttle has lifted off at night. Discovery blasted off just before 9 tonight. Low, cloud, low clouds have forced NASA to postpone a launch attempt on Thursday night. The shuttle's seven astronauts are on a mission to rewire the International Space Station. It's one leg of a three-year race to finish construction on the station before shuttles are retired in 2010. And the countdown is on for the holidays. Coming up on 69 News Weekend Edition, we'll show you how people all over the area were celebrating the season today. And get ready for a warm-up in the forecast. Right, Mark? Yeah, historically, uh, it's not this warm this time of year. And historically, you see about every other year, a uh, white Christmas. So can you expect it? And does it happen this week? Your forecast coming up next. Christmas is still over two weeks away, but it sure looked like Christmas Eve tonight in Berks County. There was a live nativity scene in West Reading. It was part of the Scottish Rite Masonic Family Life Program. There was also a holiday display and many other activities. And yes, even Santa Claus came by to make an appearance. Santa wasn't the only one flying around today. The Christmas in the Air program was held at the Reading Airport. There were free presents for kids and some even got free airplane rides. And Santa Claus, again, made an appearance there. And Santa was a very busy guy today. This morning he was in Catasauqua for the first Breakfast with Santa event. Kids got a chance to tell Santa what they wanted for Christmas. There was caroling as well. And there will be another Breakfast with Santa next Saturday morning at 11 at Salem United Church of Christ on Walnut. And they were also celebrating the holidays today in McCungy. There were special events throughout the borough all day. There were plenty of crafts for kids. And there was also a holiday craft and vendor show. So everybody getting in the holiday spirit, Mark. Yeah, that guy sure gets around. Uh, Can you believe it? Saint Nick. Well, he's magical, you know. I, I know that. And That's he how you get around. He has a great sleigh to get around. So uh, Whether it's the snow or not, that sleigh gets around. Absolutely. And speaking of the holidays, now the day 
basically officially over at this point. And, yep. and of course, shopping officially over. So how many days do we have left to oh, shop? You're making me Six nervous here. days until Hanukkah and 15 days until Christmas. So get the shopping <laughs> done. And feeling like Christmas the last couple of days, at least temperature-wise, and feeling like the holidays as we dealt with temperatures in the teens a couple of nights. And it looks like through the overnight hours tonight, some locations will get down into the teens. Most locations right now, right around 30 degrees, give or take a degree or two. And the wind chills, once you factor in that wind, a lot chillier than that. 24 degrees right now in Strasbourg, 23 in the Lehigh Valley, and 28 in Reading. So some chillier conditions still around our area. But it looks like as we move into the day on Sunday, that milder air returns to our area as we continue to see that high-pressure system slide off to the east and affect the east coast. It looks like mostly sunny skies under that high-pressure system. You can see that giant area of clear sky so it looks like mostly sunny skies for our sunday and it looks like that'll stick around for monday as well you can see no precipitation in the area as well so we have a nice dry streak to go along with those mild conditions over the next couple of days this high pressure system in control and it's basically stretching all the way back to the midwest it looks like this cold front this backdoor cold front will affect us on tuesday and that'll bring more cloud cover to our area later in the day on Tuesday, and it could affect the temperatures a degree or two, but it looks like generally we're talking about upper 40s and low 50s on Tuesday as well. And then we'll see that low pressure system and cold front move into the area as we move into the day on Wednesday. So an unseasonably mild start to our work week once again, and it looks like rain returns to the area as we move into the middle part of the work week. So by Wednesday, you're gonna need the umbrellas, and it looks like we get a little bit of a break on Thursday. The next 24 hours shape up like this for tonight, clear to partly cloudy, an overnight low of 22 degrees. And some of the outlying areas could see those temperatures drop down into the upper teens. Then for tomorrow, sunny to partly cloudy and milder, a high temperature of 50 degrees, overnight low of 24. Still a little breezy across the viewing area, but we're seeing everything generally get better over the next couple of days. And there's a look at your extended forecast. We lose the wind on Monday, and that's really been what I think is the worst part about the temperatures the last couple of days. Of course, Friday was just unbearable across our viewing area. And it looks like that's going to improve as we move into the first part of the work week. And the temperature's really not all that bad. Some showers on Wednesday and on Friday, but not a whole lot of rainfall with either one of those events it looks like right no. now so a relatively dry streak okay. that we've just had and it looks like that continues over the next couple of days okay we'll take it all right and it's been very frigid but i know a lot of people hoping well maybe we have a white christmas too. a lot of people hoping for the snow unfortunately mm -hmm. just not going to happen in this forecast we still have what did i say 15 days yep. left until christmas and it looks, doesn't look like it's going to happen for hanukkah but there's still an outside shot that we hit it for christmas yeah, and at least be cold enough during the christmas holiday that maybe people can go skiing absolutely because they're making the snow. They still make the snow when yeah, the temperatures right. are that cold. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. In business news now, Wall Street's top financial firms could have a bigger impact than normal this week. Deborah Kostrin explains in our Bloomberg Weekend Report. The stock market ended the week higher due in part to a rally on Friday. U.S. job growth in November exceeded forecasts and stocks rose as the employment report underscored the economy's ability to withstand slowdowns in housing and manufacturing. For the week, the Dow, the S&P and the Nasdaq all posted gains. And hopefully investors got some rest this weekend because they are in for a busy week. Wall Street's top brokerage firms break down their bottom lines. Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns will each weigh in with their fourth quarter earnings. Investors will learn if these firms, which posted record profits the previous quarter, can deliver another round of sky-high earnings. And speaking of profit, what is the 2007 outlook for General Electric? We'll learn more this week when Chief Executive Jeff Immelt hosts a webcast and conference call to discuss his projections for the world's second biggest company. And you might want to reserve some time to hear what Hilton Hotels will say to analysts about its business outlook. Meantime, if you've been unclear about the direction of oil and gas prices, OPEC's meeting this week may shed some light on that outlook. And last, but certainly not least, all eyes turn to Washington this week. Federal Reserve policymakers meet to determine the course of interest rates. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg expect the Fed will stand pat and keep the borrowing rate at 5.25%. That's a look at business with Bloomberg on the Weekend Report. I'm Deborah Kostrin. It's a long way from baseball season, but they are ready to play ball today in Reading. Coming up on 69 News Weekend Edition, we show you how they were preparing for the holiday season. The state finals in high school football are set. Find out who will be in a Hershey next Saturday. That's coming up in sports. 
They sure were hitting home runs today in Reading for the kids, at least. The Reading Phillies and the U.S. Marine Corps teamed up for the ninth consecutive season for the Toys for Tots drive at First Energy Stadium. They were collecting toys for less fortunate kids. And Santa Claus took some time out of his busy schedule and he stopped by to meet the children. like the baseball, but it's cold enough for football. Pottsville punched their ticket to Hershey Park Stadium last night. This afternoon, four other teams in the Channel 69 viewing area put it all on the line. 48 minutes for another shot at glory. And 4A Liberty traveled to War Memorial Stadium in Doylestown to face Pensbury. The Falcons would be a handful, and this Eastern final would be one that will be talked about for years to come. We start things off in the second quarter, tied up at 7 apiece. Third and 15 for Liberty. Dan Persa hitting Akeem Smith. He gets into the end zone 25 yards later. And the Hurricanes take the 14-7 lead into the break. But less than four and a half minutes to play. All tied up now at 14. Persa running the quarterback sweep. Four yards into the zone. 21-14 Liberty. Under two minutes left. Pensbury responding. The pitch to Jackson Fagan. He gets in from those same four yards. And we're all tied up at 21 apiece. Pensbury would miss a 42-yard field goal at the reg end of regulation. So we go into overtime. And it would be a wild and woolly one. First possession of overtime. Pensbury's Fagan fumbling at the goal line. C.J. Mark recovers in the end zone. So the Falcons take the 28-21 lead. But in the ensuing possession, fourth and eight for Liberty. Their last chance. Persa is going to find Ray Mamuzic. Eight yards. And we're all tied up again at 28 apiece. Into the second overtime we go. Liberty up 31-28. Pensbury with a chance to win it on third down. But Victor Iturbidis, his pass is knocked away by Joe Orlando. That saves the game for Liberty. Falcons would kick a field goal. We go into a third overtime. Pensbury up 38-31. Now third and two for Liberty. Dan Purser rolling out, doing what he does best, finding Justin Rivera in the end zone. Three touchdown passes, two touchdown runs for Purser today. It's all tied up at 38 apiece. In the fourth, Liberty gets the ball first. Hakeem Smith powering in from two yards out. It's 45-38 Canes. Could they hold off Pensbury? They're in suing possession. Fourth and ten. Victor Iturbides can't find anybody open. He tries to run. Liberty would stop him. Liberty, they finally win in four overtimes, 45-38. They'll face Upper St. Clair next Saturday for the state championship at 7 p.m. at Hershey Park Stadium. In the 2A Eastern Final at BASD Stadium, Wilson was looking to give Liberty some company next Saturday. The Wyomissing would be one formidable opponent. Opening drive for Wyomissing, third and 12 in the Wilson 31. Mike Mancius running through. Can't catch him. They finally do. They bring him down at the 13. That's D.J. Lenahan there. He helped set up a one-yard touchdown by Pat McDonough. Six-nothing Spartans at that point. They are later third and 17. Mancius hitting Greg Lord out in the flat. Lenahan lower in the boom there. Why missing would have to punt. In the ensuing drive, Wilson finally answering. Sean Hoffman going up the gut. Five yards there. The Warriors also fail on the extra point. It's a 6-6 ball game. Second quarter now. Mancius looking zone along 16 yards to Greg Lord. He hauls it in. The Spartans went for the extra point. Playing it safe. They got it. It's 13-6. Wilson's next possession. Not what the doctor ordered here. Lenahan looking over the middle to Justin Skirbo. It's a great catch. It's a first down, but he fumbles the ball away. Pat McDonough recovering for Wyoming, missing on the Warrior 44. But fourth and nine on the Wilson 12. They're driving. The Spartans going for it. Mancius in trouble. And he puts it up. And guess who? DJ Lenahan says, thank you very much. Pulling it in. Rumbling the 92 yards to the house. Clear sailing. Nobody touched him. They're not done. They go for two in the lead. DJ Lenahan. Going to go out in the flat, the screen pass to Sean Hoffman. He gets in. The Warriors taking their first lead of the ball game, 14-13. Third quarter, how about some insurance? Why not? Lenahan could drop back here. He dials it up for Justin Skirbo. About 43 yards for another six. Wilson on top, 21-13. Wild has one last shot in the fourth. 2.29 left, fourth and 29 on the Warrior 31. Mancius looking deep for Greg Lord. Ugly pass, but catchable. But Lord can't hold on. Wilson is returning to Hershey 21-13. They'll face Jeanette 
Saturday at 1 o'clock. To the hardwood now, and Allen Iverson is still on the roster. The Sixers haven't made a deal yet, but the answer wasn't in the lineup, nor the arena tonight when his team took on the Magic in Orlando. Philly looking to snap a six-game losing streak. The Sixers came into this one tied with Boston, Charlotte, and Memphis with just five wins this season, the fewest in the NBA. They might have used Doc tonight if he was able to dress up. First quarter, Orlando getting flashy. Andre Iguodala sniffing it out, picking up the steal, and getting the thunderous jam the other way. He finished tied for the team high 19 points. Sixers down six after one second quarter. Chris Weber and Kevin Ollie playing who wants it. C. Webb sinking the jumper. He also netted 19 points. Sixers cutting the lead to three at the break. Third quarter, they get it to Kyle Korver in the corner. And Kyle spots and hits the three there. Quarter finished with 16 points. Sixers down 71-70 after three. In the fourth, coming up off the miss, Orlando's Dwight Howard would fight for it in traffic. He gets the put back off glass. He let all scores with 24 points. The Sixers fall by a bucket, 86-84. They come home to face Portland on Monday night. Finally on the ice at the Wachovia Center, the Flyers looking to snap a two-game skid tonight against the Washington Capitals. The Flyers fight back in the second down 2-0 a little over a minute after giving up a shorthanded goal. Flyers again on the power play. They hack at it in front. Simone Gagne sends it home to cut the lead in half. Then five minutes later, Simone Gagne getting the pass. He fires the slapper. Top shelf pass, Brent Johnson. It stayed tied for a whole 13 seconds. Later on the power play, Randy Robitaille fires on the net. Mike Knubel gets the rebound to go for the equalizer. We go to the third period. Washington beats Antero Nitamaki twice. The Caps hand the Flyers their third straight loss, 5-3. They'll face the Rangers in South Philly on Tuesday night. The Reading Royals, they win it tonight in overtime in Johnstown. John 3-2. And Ohio State quarterback Troy Smith, he is your Heisman Trophy winner. But hopefully we can bring some, some state gold back to, uh, to Bethlehem and Easton or Wilson Borough uh, next Saturday. it will be a lot to look forward to next Absolutely. weekend. Can't wait. All yeah. right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Well, they are still out of the scene of the explosion that destroyed three houses today in Allentown. Coming up on 69 News Weekend Edition, we'll have the latest on tonight's top story. Dozens of people are out of their homes in Allentown tonight because of an explosion that leveled three houses and damaged several others. Let's take you back out to the scene now. WFMZ's Karen Millette, live in South Allentown with the latest on tonight's top story. Karen. John, we'll give you a quick recap in case you miss it. An explosion about 1.30 this afternoon here in Allentown at the corner of Mohawk and South Delaware Streets. Three homes were flattened this afternoon by that explosion. UGI tells us a contractor was working on a gas meter about the same time as the blast, but no word tonight on whether a gas leak is to blame. That is under investigation. We hope to have more answers for you that for you on that tomorrow. The homes on Mohawk Street, people inside those homes were evacuated. No one was seriously injured or killed. It's amazing when you look at that video that everyone made it out and is okay tonight. Several of those people, dozens in fact, are at the shelter and will be staying there overnight for uh, at least that time. Those, of course, who have their home damaged are being helped by the American Red Cross. Here at the scene tonight, crews are still working. They will likely be here through the night and into tomorrow. There's a lot of work to be done. There's, of course, a lot of debris when that explosion happened. Parts of the building went all over the yards and down the street as well. So there's a lot to clean up tonight. They're also trying to get all the services turned back on so that people have power and heat in this area, especially on this cold winter night here tonight. And of course, we'll have much more on this continuing story for you tomorrow on the news. For now, we are live in Allentown at Karen Millette, 69 News. All right. Thanks very much, Karen. That's all for 69 News at 10. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow at 6 and 10.